All right, this time we're looking at um, an interesting link between combinations, which we saw last time, and Pascal's triangle, which you might have seen even back in primary school or at least early in your high school days. Um, it's a structure that looks a little bit like this. Okay, and the defining uh, structure, the defining characteristic of this triangle is that if I take any two numbers like four and six next to each other, they will add up to give the next number below those ones. All right, so they add to 10 and 10 and five add to 15 and you can uh, make more and more rows of this if you like. All right. But we're focusing on one interesting thing today which is if you pick out any row of these um, numbers in Pascal's triangle, what you find is that those numbers actually correspond exactly to the combinations which we saw last time. All right, so this row corresponds to 6 choose 0, 6 choose 1, 6 choose 2, all the way to 6 choose 6. All right, you can verify this on your calculator if you really feel inclined to. But I think there are a few things that should be quite immediately obvious to us. All right, firstly, that the fact that 6 true 0 and 6 true 6 both equal 1, or in fact anything true 0 and anything true itself must equal 1. Now, that I think should be obvious, because given 6 objects, there's only one way to choose nothing, which is to do nothing, and there's only one way to choose all of them, which is to choose all of them, right? So it, I think it should be obvious that the ends are always equal to 1. The other uh, rather special thing is uh, Pascal's triangle has symmetry. So 6 choose 1 is equal to 6 choose 5. 6 choose 2 equals 6 choose 4. We can swap them without consequence. And again, I think that with a bit of thought should be quite clear because if I, were to, if I was to choose five things, surely that is equivalent to choosing which one to leave out, which one not to take. Similarly, if I choose make any selection of four things, that must be equivalent to which two things not to take. So of course there must be a bit of symmetry with these 6 choose 1, 6 choose 5, 6 choose 2, 6 choose 4. I think the symmetry should also be quite obvious. All right. The only thing that is maybe not as obvious is uh, why is it that the um, combinations obey this structure where when I add up the two like numbers above, I actually get the um, get the fifteen there, All right? So what are these two numbers? Well, they are uh, five choose three and five choose four. So I'll pick on this one. I'll demonstrate this one visually because I know there's proofs that use factorials. I really think that they hide what's really happening. So I'm going to demonstrate the fact that six choose four equals five choose three plus five choose four. And I hope you'll be able to see quite clearly that this generalizes to um, to every possible um, thing I could have chosen from this triangle, right? It always works. It doesn't only work for six and three and four and five. It works for uh, anything on this triangle, all right? So let's have a look at that. Six choose four versus five choose three and five choose four, okay? All right, so first we think about what six choose four means. It means I take six objects and I choose four of them. So I could choose these four, or I could choose those four, and I'm counting how many of those selections I've got. And that's as simple as six choose four is. That's all it does, okay? What about this one? Five choose three plus five choose four. It's a bit weird, okay? Now, I'm gonna stay with six objects, except I'm going to color one of them pink. And I'm still going to choose four of them. But when I choose four, I'm going to care. I'm going to be concerned about whether I take the pink one or not. So let's say I want to take the pink one. That means I've got this guy already. And so I guess I only need to choose uh, three others from, from those. And so I could choose those three or those three. The point is I only need to choose three remaining objects from these five. And choosing three things from five is the same as that number there, five choose three. Okay. Now in any choice of four, I either take the pink one or I don't take the pink one. So what if I don't take the pink one? That means it may as well disappear, and I need to choose all my four objects from these five. And so that must correspond with this number here, five choose four, right? 
And for every selection of four objects from from uh, six, I either have that pink one or I don't. And and so actually, these two numbers they answer the same question, which is how many ways are there of choosing four objects from six? It's just that the one on the left just does so without caring about anything. The one on the right cares about whether I've chosen the pink one or not. But really, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't matter whether I care about the pink one or not. They, they must be equal, right? It's two ways of answering the same question, and so they must be equal. And this is a really important idea in, in this topic. It's called double counting. If I can answer the same question in, in, in two different ways, well, then the, those two ways must actually be the same number, and that's a very powerful way to prove things. Okay. And I just want you to spend some time now uh, practicing that. Now, I've shown some of you a couple of these questions, so sorry if, if it's a bit spoiled. But um, have a go anyway at, at this and see if you can write out a proper proof of these uh, three statements here. And I think that's probably the best way to practice the idea we saw today. Okay, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.